Hello, friends. I'm here to talk about my live set, or at least my current live set and where it's at right now because it's not finished yet. Um, I've been making uh, Ableton live sets for a number of years, but I've also been um, in the sort of doorless world working with Electron Gear, um, drum machines, samplers, that kind of thing. And even though I make all my music in Ableton, I've sort of been trying to avoid that as my way of performing live. Um, but I've actually reverted and I'm going back to the laptop and the MIDI controllers and it just seems like a kind of simpler, better way of doing things, I would say. Um, so this is it. This is where I'm at. Um, I wanted to sort of talk through the setup, how I'm managing all the tracks and I guess effects units and <clears throat> um, macros and the MIDI controllers and how it's all mapped. And it's still a work in progress. Um, so, you know, do, the, do with that information what you will. But I kind of just want to do a quick run through. Um, so without further ado, why don't I just play a bit and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So that's a track called Crystals. It's off my upcoming album. It's unreleased. It's obviously just one small chunk of it. But I just wanted to talk through how I got here. So on the left here, we've got color-coded pink. We've got all of the synths. Now, a lot of these tracks don't completely neatly fit into these categories, but that's just how I've decided to, to sort of divide it. So we've got synths and on the right hand side, we've got drums and I can, um, if I just flip over to my iPhone capture, um, I've got my Launchpad Pro Mark III and if I hit session and arrow, I can be all on the drums here. And if I hit session and go back, I'm back on the synths. Um, and then I have two launch control XLs, um, which are kind of one side, eight channels of synth, one side, eight channels of drums. And they are set up differently and they do different things. But that's kind of the bones of the setup. So let's just sort of like do a little bit of a deeper dive <clears throat> into what I've got going on these tracks. So on each of my synth tracks, I have a high pass, low pass filter, which 
is controlled by these knobs. And I've set it up so that if you move up, it's a high pass. In the middle, it's neutral. And then if you move down, it's a low pass. So it's a little bit like the knob on the Novation circuit, uh, the, the master filter knob, if you are familiar with that. But the way I've done that um, is not completely trivial. I've got, it's just an EQ8, um, which does this. But the way I've done it is using uh, a Max for Live plugin called Map8. Um, in which you can, it's just like a sort of Swiss army knife of macros, um, but you can have different curves. Like this is for uh, the resonance, I believe. <laughs> and uh, this is for the cutoff. And so here you can see when you turn the knob, it doesn't do anything on this side up until halfway. And on this side, it does everything up to halfway and then does nothing after that. And it's the same over here. So it's sort of like a little bit complicated, but it's actually kind of simple. I've got all these utilities here doing various functions, but, and then there's a limiter at the end just to sort of keep everything neat and tidy. <clears throat> I've got this Redux here as well which um, on the camera is these knobs up the top. Um, I'll just solo this one and we'll have a play. And with the filter. And I fine-tuned that filter so that the resonance peaks in a kind of satisfying way only at certain points. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a DJ filter, I guess. Now, there are simpler ways of doing that. Um, like I could have just, like there's this uh, plugin that just came out, a Max for Life plugin that recently came out. Um, who made it? I can't remember. I found it through, it doesn't matter. I'll come back to that later, but it is essentially a DJ filter. It doesn't have any resonance, but it's kind of like got its own pre-built resonance, but I decided it'd be nice to have more control. Um, and I think that the filter here has a lot of control, which is good. Um, and also it doesn't like peak too harshly because of the limiter and everything. So it's sort of like a nice little effects unit that I've created there. But then um, if I move over here, you can see I've got a synth bus and I've got a drum bus. All of the drums go into the drum bus, all the synths go into the synth bus naturally. But if I go to the synth bus, um, I've got this other effects rack here, rack here that I've created, which it's pretty complicated, I guess, but is actually not that complicated. <laughs> it's just using some complex plugins. Um, so I've got Stata from Sign Vibes, which is like a tape emulation plugin. It's like really nice one. It's my favorite one and I've used a few and it's the best one I've heard. Uh, I'm using Grain Dad from, who makes Grain Dad? Do we find out in here? Let's just have a quick look so I don't, oh my God. So I don't uh, leave anybody out in the cold, so to speak. Uh, Sugar Bites. Sugar Bites makes Grain Dad. I think that they also made, was it Glitch Edit or something like that? Anyway, great plugin, uh, very glitchy plugin. Um, and it's kind of got all these randomization features but anyway, uh, I've also got a limiter in there. I've got a phaser flanger. I've got a Valhalla delay. And I've got a spark verb from UVI. And I've mapped... The, the way they're set up here is actually not 
how they are arranged in um, the chain. And it's also not how I've got them arranged on the knobs, but it's too much of a pain in the ass to rearrange these things. Like you can't rearrange them. You just have to start fresh. So fuck that. I've just got them set to different ones. So if, um, if I go over to my iPhone capture, set to all these knobs here in the middle, this middle row. So back in Ableton, you can see that if I bring the granular knob up, it's the first knob in the line of knobs, but it's the third one here. And yeah, if I bring up the second knob, the tape goes up, third knob, phaser, fourth knob is the rate of the phaser, and fifth knob, delay, sixth knob, feedback, then reverb and the reverb decay, right? So let's... Uh, just have a quick listen. I'll just play, get rid of uh, the drum tracks and just play the synths. So that's really cool. And uh, my favorite knob is the granular knob because it just completely warps the sound in a very rhythmic way. And all that's really doing is increasing the dry wet on the grain dad. And in grain dad, if I bring it up, um, all of these parameters are set to play randomly, I suppose. So, so you can see them shifting. So that's fun. Um, and so I've got this effects chain on the master of all of the synths or on the synth bus. I also have um, this Analog Obsession uh, Buster compressor, which is, you know, a classic compressor emulation. I also have uh, Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor just for a little bit of extra uh, compression. Um, I've got the utility just dropping it down 3 dB and I have this compressor which is side chained to the kick channel in the drums, which is handy. So anyway, um, over on the drum side, on the drum bus, I have a similar setup um, of effects. Let's just unmute all the drums and mute all the synths and maybe I will go down a bit to a different so I'm playing like yeah like that So, you probably noticed down in the corner here, a bunch of knobs are changing. If I go back to my iPhone capture, this bottom row of knobs, they're all uh, right down, I guess you might say. Like they're at, uh, you know, the lowest point in their trajectory. <laughs> I don't know how to say that better. So, on the drums, I have this module of effects and I've got it set so that when you turn up the knob, you can see that this sample rate reduction 
normally would be turning down to affect the sample rate, but on the knob it turns up just to make it convenient for me so that all the knobs are the same. It's the same with the width or the low pass filter. When I turn it up, the knob goes down so that on my MIDI controller, it's always down. Down is always like off or neutral and then up is always wet or like affecting the signal. And so I've got these little modules. I've got the Octatrack uh, filter module, which I sort of, let's just have a look if I can find it. I made some sort of Octatrack inspired effects units. As you can see here, if I bring up the filter, yeah, it's, uh, it's much the same except for on these ones I've deleted the distortion, but anyway, that's not that interesting. And then likewise, I have all these other ones like the lo-fi page from the Octatrack, which I used over here. And so long story short, I have a high and low pass filter. I have a sample rate reduction. I have a distortion. I have a delay which is the Valhalla delay here. I did have a reverb, but I found it was a bit, it just wasn't sounding good. And with the Valhalla delay, you've got this diffusion knob, which kind of turns your delay into a reverb, or at least gives it a reverb vibe. And then I have a flanger. So if I just play these drums again, and I bring up the delay, the diffusion. You can hear that it's basically a bit of a reverb, so I sort of killed two birds with one stone with that. And then I just have a basic flanger. So I wanted these effects to be kind of versatile, bit generic, I suppose, so that they're just sort of, I guess like the sort of effects you'd find on like a DJ mixer. Um, and I think that I've kind of achieved that. And uh, I really like, especially the sample rate reduction and the distortion, if we just play that. And the distortion. Let's bring in some flanger. So lots of cool little things you can do there. But anyway, basically what I've got here is just a setup that allows me to interact with my tracks in a live context, you know, obviously. Um, as with the synth uh, bus, the drum bus also has a, a buster compressor and it also has the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. And then on my master channel, I have a little bit of soft clipping, courtesy of Frontier. And cherry on top is the Pro L2 um, True Peak limiter, which is probably one of my favorite plugins ever. It's just amazing. And so that keeps my entire signal um, in check, make sure it doesn't get clipped. But um, should we just sort of have a listen through some of these other tracks and I'll just sort of, like I've got scenes set up and I just th figured it'd be like nice to just sort of have a playthrough of some of the elements of it. So let's do that.
So you get the idea. Um, I feel like this is a nice little setup. It's not like completely outlandish. It's pretty, I, I would say it's pretty common for how people use Ableton um, in a live context. But I really feel like this works for me. This has uh, been a long time just toying with the mechanics of Ableton, trying to get it to work for me in this context. And I think that this really does at this stage. So, yeah, um, please let me know if you have any questions about how I run through this, how I've created this, uh, if you have any comments or tips or whatever, anything you want to say, just leave it in the comments and uh, we can have a chat about it. Uh, Cool. That's all from me for today. I'll catch you next time.